Hi, my name is Tad Wanbeer. I'm a certified craniosacotherapy practitioner and certified instructor of craniosacotherapy. This video is an overview of the dural tube, the three meningeal layers that encase the spinal cord. The dural tube is found within the spinal canal of the vertebral column. We'll look at the dural tube in three views. First view is a mid-sagittal section, followed by an anterior view detail, which is then followed by a transverse section detail. And then we will end by looking at a video of the dural tube moving in synchrony with the craniosacral rhythm. This is a mid-sagittal section view of the vertebral column. Anterior is identified. The vertebral column extends from the foramen magnum, which is a large midline opening at the base of the occiput, to the coccyx. The vertebral column is comprised of individual vertebra that stack to form a bony column. The sacrum is at the base of the vertebral column, and the sacrum then uh, interconnects with the coccyx. In between portions of each vertebra, which is called the bodies of the vertebra, we find intervertebral discs. Moving on to the spinal canal, which is a long bony canal opening within the vertebral column. The spinal canal is also referred to as the vertebral canal. It's shown in yellow in this illustration. The spinal canal extends from the foramen magnum to the coccyx. There is a canal as well within the sacrum called the sacral canal. It comprises a portion of the spinal canal. The dural tube is found within the spinal canal. The dural tube is also known as the dural sac. It extends from the foramen magnum to the level of sacral segment S2. At S2, the dural sac, the dural tube ends, and the three meningeal layers that form the dural sac, the dural tube, extend downward to attach to the coccyx, uh, and this extension is called the phylum terminale externum, also known as the coccygeal ligament. The spinal cord is housed encased within the dural tube. The spinal cord extends from the foramen magnum in between levels L lumbar 1 and lumbar 2 in an adult. The lower end of the spinal cord is called the conus medullaris. From the very tip of the conus medullaris, the membrane layer that encases the spinal cord, called the pia mater membrane, shown in this drawing as a red line, will then extend from the conus medullaris to S2. It is called the phylum terminale internum. At S2, the pia mater membrane, as shown in the blue line, will then merge with the other two membrane layers at S2. This next illustration will show the dura mater membrane as it separates at the frame and magnum. So the drawing on the left is the illustration we are looking at. We'll take a look at a larger section of the cervical area. The frame and magnum is shown in a dashed uh, rectangle. The dura layers, dura mater membrane layers at the frame and magnum will separate. So within the cranium, the dura mater membrane forms the periosteum of the cranial bones. The dura mater membrane has two layers within the cranium. The periosteal layer forms the periosteum of the cranial bones, and within attached to the periosteal layer is the meningeal layer. At the dura mater, at the foramen magnum, these layers will separate. The periosteal layer will merge with the periosteum of the spinal canal. 
and the meningeal layer will form the outermost membrane layer, meningeal layer, of the dural tube. In the next illustration, we'll take a look at a detail of the dural tube meningeal layers. Dura mater membrane shown is green. Arachnoid membrane is adhered to the dura mater membrane. The pia mater membrane is attached to the spinal cord. Pia mater membrane shown in the red line. In between the arachnoid membrane and pia mater membrane is a space called the subarachnoid space. Spinal cord shown in green. Spanning the distance between the arachnoid membrane and the pia mater membrane are small little threads, thread-like structures made of collagen, so they're collag collagenous strands as fibroblasts all also span the distance. They're called arachnoid trabeculae. There is a space in between the dura mater membrane and the bony aspect of the spinal canal. It is called the epidural space. This is a detail showing the epidural space. Spinal canal shown. Dura mater membrane. Outermost membrane layer of the dural tube. And the epidural space shown in yellow, which is filled with epidural fat. Epidural fat is in some research called liquid fat because it has a um, more fluid consistency than other fat in uh, other parts of the body. Within the epidural fat there is a venous plexus, lymphatics, uh, blood vessels, and uh, strands of collagen. The epidural fat typically is not adhered to the dura mater membrane, so it's not adhered rather to the dural tube to allow the dural tube to have a slight independence of motion within the epidural space hugged by epidural fat. So the epidural fat allows some motion of the dural tube within the epidural space, but it also helps to cushion and protect the dural tube. The superior towards the top uh, of the head boundary of the epidural space filled with uh, epidural fat is the frame and magnum, and its lower boundary is the sacrococcygeal membrane. This uh, drawing shows dural tube attachments within the spinal canal, first beginning with uh, attachment at the frame and magnum, so that showed by the dashed line. The dural tube is attached firmly to the entire circumference of the frame and magnum. Then the anterior front aspect of the dural tube is attached within the spinal canal, the level C2 and C3. Firmly attached to sacral segment number two. And then the phylum terminale extends to attach to the coccyx. There are atta ligamentous attachments extending from two suboccipital muscles that attach to the dural tube on the posterior back aspect. One is in between the uh, occiput and C1, the other in between C1 and C2. There are meningeal vertebral ligaments throughout the entire lumbar region. These arrows that are coming up are showing the anterior front uh, ligamentous attachments of the meningeovertebral ligaments from dura to bone. These arrows are showing the posterior meningeovertebral ligament attachments. There are also attachments laterally that aren't shown in this drawing. The for attachments of the dural tube to the foramen magnum and S2 and coccyx are called firm uh, dural tube attachments. The attachments uh, on the other area, C2, C3, C1, C2, and through the lumbar area are called loose uh, ligamentous attachments, which help to support the dural tube within the spinal canal, but also allow it to move, have a slight degree of independence of motion within the spinal canal. This next illustration shows a detail of the cervical dural tube attachments. 
frame and magnum is shown in the dashed rectangle. So firm attachment of the drill tube to the entire frame and magnum. C2, C3 attachments on the anterior aspect of the dural tube to the spinal canal shown in the bright green. And then the myodural bridge attachments from the rectus capitis posterior minor muscle shown in red will then expand, uh, span from the rectus capitis posterior minor to the dural tube and then from the rectus capitis posterior major, also shown in red, in between C1 and C2, attaching to the dural tube. Moving on to the spinal nerves, shown in a dashed rectangle, followed by the sacral nerves, shown in a dashed rectangle, and then the coccygeal nerve. Moving on to an anterior view detail of the dural tube. Dura mater membrane in green. Nerve root in green as well. Nerve root fascia. And then epidural fat shown in yellow that's encasing the dural tube. The epidural fat will also encase portions of the nerve root. Uh, the epidural fat is not found within the dura mater membrane itself, although it is, except for at the nerve root levels. There is some epidural fat in the nerve root levels, so it helps to cushion uh, the nerve roots on the outside of the nerve root as well as helping to soften the dura at the nerve roots. In this illustration, we've opened a window to look into the dura mater membrane layers and spinal cord within this small section of the dural tube. Dura mater membrane in green, attaching to it is the arachnoid membrane in magenta. Pia mater membrane in red, subarachnoid space, the space in between the arachnoid membrane and pia mater membrane. And then strands of collagen spanning the distance from arachnoid to pia, called arachnoid trabeculae. Some of these strands are also fibroblasts. And then the spinal cord shown in green. In this illustration, the dural layers and subarachnoid space are shown as in the previous drawing, but as the little blue lines represent the denticulate ligaments, they are strands of collagen that span the distance from the pia mater membrane in red to the dura mater membrane in green. They are found on the lateral aspects uh, within the dural tube in between all nerve root levels. Moving on to a transverse section of the vertebral column, anterior is identified, vertebral body, followed by spinous process, transverse process, transverse process, spinal canal in yellow, and then intervertebral foramina, the openings on the sides, lateral aspects through which the nerve roots will pass. In this drawing, we'll take a look at the meningeal layers of the dural tube, dura mater membrane in green, arachnoid in magenta, pia mater membrane in red, as it encases the spinal cord and nerve roots, spinal cord in green, subarachnoid space, the, the space in between the arachnoid membrane and pia mater membrane, and strands of collagen or fibroblasts spanning the distance between arachnoid membrane and pia mater membrane. The yellow represents epidural fat within the epidural space. Ventral nerve root, dorsal nerve root shown, dorsal root ganglion, and now the nerve root fascia. Moving on to arteries and veins, some of them within the subarachnoid space, anterior spinal artery, anterior spinal vein, anterior radicular artery and anterior radicular vein, and then radicular arteries and veins on the left side are being shown now. Now posterior radicular artery, posterior radicular vein, and then on the left side, radicular artery and radicular vein.
as well, followed by posterior spinal arteries and posterior spinal veins. Not shown are arachnoid villi at the nerve root levels. Arachnoid villi, extensions of the arachnoid membrane that project into uh, radicular veins and they transport or valve-like uh, structures that allow cerebral spinal fluid to move from the subarachnoid space into the radicular veins and there are also arachnoid villi that project into the periphery and they allow cerebral spinal fluid to flow into the interstitial spaces of the periphery. And here we're going to look at venous plexuses within the epidural space. The epidural space is still shown as yellow in this illustration. Into and then the venous plexus within the epidural space is called the internal venous vertebral plexus, shown by the little blue circles and the arrows are pointing to them. And these uh, veins, this venous system, uh, within the epidural space, they don't have valves. So uh, any changes in the epidural fat, epidural space, adverse strain of the epidural space can cause venous congestion. Now we're going to move on to look at the dural tube. Uh, moving in synchrony with the craniosacral rhythm, all the way to the left, the dark blue is a portion of the occiput, all the way to the right of the screen is the sacrum and coccyx, and then the uh, epidural space is in yellow. And the dural tube is the small lines, and the dark green is the spinal cord, and the vertebral column is in blue. So if you'll notice the occiput, sacrum, coccyx, all of the vertebral segments, epidural space, yellow is adipose tissue within the space, the dural tube, spinal cord shown in green, and the phylum terminale internum and externum, all are moving in synchrony with the craniosacral rhythm. I hope you found this overview of the dural tube uh, helpful. Thank you so very much.